working or? No, it was an actually a really bizarre chance meeting, so we kind of knew it was meant to be. I was there with a well, girlfriend. Is there a story you'd like to tell? We can, we can do that in a bit. Yeah, it's a cute story, right. actually. We'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. okay. As much as you can speak up and speak okay. clearly, would be great because we have a little background noise. Yeah. Ambient hotel guests. <laughs> as okay. they pass by. <laughs> First of all, let's talk about you and, and your career and your modeling. Where this all began for you, when did you know this is something you wanted to do and make a career? I kind of started when I was 18 years old. I was just starting my first year of college. And I actually, sounds like one of those cliche stories, but I met someone on the street who said, you should really think about being a model. And so my mom actually went with me, and it turned out to be a really great thing for me. And I did that part time for a while. Um, at some point, I kind of took some time off, went to Europe, modeled a little while there, and continued to go on. And it, it was just a lot of fun, a lot of growing up. You learn a lot really quickly. I was very, very shy. So going to Europe was a big thing for me. It really made me come out of my shell. So it's been a great experience. What's the experience like when someone does come up to you and says you should be modeling? I mean, how conscious of your own beauty were you that something you could do? Well, I've always been severely insecure, even now, so I'm like a terrible person to, to ask. I'm never going to be like, yeah, I think I should be a model. I'm actually the, uh, I think my hips are too big and I think this is wrong. So I was a little hesitant and there's a lot of scams too, so I was kind of like wary of the whole thing. But I, I think what helped me was that I never took it too, too seriously. I saw a lot of girls who would quit school and would just make themselves go down to about 100 pounds when they were 5 foot 10, and I didn't want to be that. <clears throat> it made me a little nervous, so I really focused on school, and I realized that, okay, I must have something they're looking for, but I'm never going to be perfect, so I'm not going to try. And I think that kind of kept me going where I never went that other way, and I never hated myself. I have my normal insecurities. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's helpful. But if you're not striving to be perfect, then you're not going to ever be that disappointed. So I think that was the best thing to do. Talk about what it, what it is that you have that they were looking for. What is it about your look or your style? If you can put that into words about what you have. I think, I think when I was younger, it was really popular to be blonde, to have blue eyes, and to have thin lips, and to be named Mary. You know, I wasn't exactly the norm. And, and so therefore, I never really thought I was all that attractive. I would take pictures with my lips kind of like that but I think at a certain point that just became really really popular you know having the the dark hair and the dark eyes and the full lips and looking ethnic but not quite being able to tell what you are and I think that was what really was a big thing for me they, they knew I was something else but weren't quite sure what I was so I think that's what helped me a lot in the business mm -hmm. just being a little different how we would sound it's pretty noisy yeah well, as long as she sounds real clear, and we can say we caught up with her at the hotel, yeah. it could be all right. As long as she sounds clear. Yeah, she's totally clear. All right. Keep, keep going over here. There's a, there's a lot of talk about the downside to modeling, the down thing. If you can kind of talk about just, it must be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Of, if you can talk about just the kick of doing that day to day, what it's like. I just think it's a great thing. I mean, if you keep it in perspective, it, it is a lot of fun. You get to meet wonderful people. You get to travel to beautiful places. You get to wear great clothing. It's just a lot of fun. I think the most fun I've had with it is just the people that I've met. You just really do meet, and you make a lot of friends, and, and you have a lot of stories to tell, and it's a good time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And talk about some of the people you've met. One of the people you met became your, your future husband. My future husband, yes. But that had nothing to do with work, actually. So no. that was just a pure chance luck meeting that was meant to be. Yeah? Well, so how, how'd that go? I, um, I went on vacation with my best friend. And we actually have birthdays that are three days apart. So we were taken as a birthday gift to Montreal. And um, we had a little three-day weekend there. And it was not going very well. I had a lot of things happen, camera stolen, food poisoning, just a bad weekend. So I was pretty much set to go home. And at some point, we were just, it was like a Saturday night. I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go back home to New York. And I said, just one more night. Let's just hang out one more night. And we did. And um, it turns out that Matchbox 20 was playing in town. And so we said, okay, why not? Let's go see. And small little venue. And um, a mutual friend actually ended up introducing us, who was there at the time. and. He kind of knew, he said he never set anyone up, but he knew that we'd really like each other. So we met for about 10 minutes, that was it. We said hi and left and I knew and he knew and we actually spoke on the phone for a few weeks after that before we ever had a first date. So by the time we had our first date, we just, we were dating. It just kind of happened. How so. conscious were you of the whole rock star thing? Have you 
have you hung out with Brock? Not people, at all. Or? That's the strange thing. I had never heard of backstage. You know, it's really funny now when I travel with him and I see all these girls that are backstage. I never knew how to find backstage. And I was that kid who went to the concert and kind of went home and didn't know it existed. You know, they just kind of appeared and left. So I wasn't conscious at all. It was a bizarre experience. Actually, when I first met him, I didn't realize how popular he was. So after I left and I see all these girls screaming, I'm like, wow, this is, this is different. This is a little interesting. So it was a really different world for me. Do you think he liked that in you, knowing that you weren't kind of that kind of I think that had a lot to do with it. You know, the fact that when I met him, I got to know him through him. It wasn't this, well, he's this, this pop star and girls love him. And, and I didn't know any about that stuff. So I kind of learned everything about him. I wasn't on the internet and I wasn't reading through magazines. And so we learned about each other through each other. And the important thing was that I love music and I've sang my whole life and played the piano. So we had that in common. It wasn't the rock star thing. It was more just, I enjoyed the music and it's been wonderful. There's the old cliche though with rock stars and models. Do you guys joke about that? Yeah, we know we kid around because I think when people don't know us and they see us, they're like, oh, okay, it's the rock star and the model. But know us for more than two minutes and you know that we're just, we're best friends. We're like two 10 year olds and we hang out together, just really silly and we're just buddies. Mm -hmm. Talk about this kind of career journey the two of you are taking together in terms of these two great professions and how much work and time and travel and how, how does that jump? Yeah, it's, you know, it could be crazy and I and my big decision was I didn't want it to become a relationship where we make a date once a month to see each other because that could happen and, and it's, for me, it's and for Rob, it's not what we really wanted. So um, we really made it work. I, I travel with him whenever I'm not working and my agency always has this calendar which is always changing because of the schedules that are crazy and they know where to find me and I'll fly out and I'll fly back and forth and if he's not working he'll come with me and if I'm not working I'll go with him and it's really worked so far. We've, we've managed to really stay together as much as possible and it's worked out really well. And so you did get to work together. We did which was great. It was really great because we never knew if it would ever come up you know and it might never come up again but this was like a perfect perfect time for us to work together. It just really came together really well and it was an amazing experience. It really, really was. We will have this forever. You talk about just how just how that blossomed into something so huge. Was there any conscious of that at all when you were doing it? Or? You know, when he was writing the song, I remember we were sitting in our living room and he's, you know, sitting there writing and he finishes and he's like, so what do you think? And I was just, my mouth was open. I was dumbfounded. Like, this is going to be huge. This is just going to be huge. And he's like, you think so? And I'm like, I, I do. I think this is going to be amazing. And then we met Carlos when he went to go and um, record it. He was an amazing man. He's just, he is, when you say what, what are the advantages of, of doing what you do, is meeting people like Carlos, who is an amazing person. And um, it just kind of ended up happening, you know, they recorded it. First Rob wasn't even supposed to sing the song and mm -hmm. he ended up singing the song and working with Carlos and then um, it just seemed kind of a natural progression and I ended up in the video and it was a lot of fun. Uh -huh. It was a great time. The actual fun, everyone's very familiar with the video now. Yeah. And so, so what we it's see... It's always on. <laughs> yeah, it's been on for, for months and months. Talk, talk about now that it's that people are looking at it and people, was it, was it as hot as it looked there? Was it sweaty? Was that I will real? say this, it was literally 100 degrees and like a thousand percent humidity in Harlem on a really hot day. It was just, and everyone's just like, was it really hot? I didn't eat those water sprays. They had them, but I didn't eat them at all. It was just so hot. And they had that little fan with me in the bedroom that did nothing. Nothing. I'm just standing there going, come on. So it was really, really hot. But it was so much fun. That video was incredible. There were times where most of the footage where you see the people dancing wasn't even when they were really shooting because Carlos and his band were jamming the entire time. So they would yell cut and everyone would be dancing and that's when the real stuff came out and they would just keep shooting and that's where you got some of the best stuff. So it was a fun, fun time. We had two days of it and it was great. It's a great memory. And how do you look back at that now, knowing that you did so much for your career? What have people have seen this? Do you look at it that, that way? That I at never, all, you know, I never expected that at all, and I, I hardly expected it to be on this much. You know, you can't turn on VH1 without seeing it at some point. But it was, it was amazing. I had taken actually a little break from modeling, and that was kind of what made me decide, okay, it's time to go back. I was getting a lot of calls, and okay, so who's representing her, and who's the girl in the smooth video? So it, it helped a lot. It really, really did. And, and it wasn't even meant to. It was just a lot of fun for me. So. Talk about that in terms of representation in your deal with Will and Mina. Tell a little bit about that. This is all a new thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had taken a little while off, and um, I had decided this was the perfect time for me to go back and get representation because so many people were asking me, 
you know, who's representing you, and, and I really felt that that was the best way to go. So I, I went to a few places, and I met with the people at Wilhelmina, and they were amazing. They were really just on the same page as I was, just a great family unit, and they're really, really, really supportive, and, and they were just great. So I decided that was the best way to go, and it's been wonderful. They've been really, really behind me, and I'm excited about working with them. And what are your, what's your ideal plan in terms of your career? Where you'd like to see this go in terms of modeling and videos or acting? How do you see this going on from this point? You know, I just want to have fun with it. I want to, I want to continue with the fashion end of it. I think um, doing, doing some things on television might be fun. Not so much as acting as just you know, getting involved with music and fashion maybe on television. So I just want to have fun with it, see how it progresses and opens up on its own. And just enjoy every day of it. I think that's the main thing. A lot of people just let it happen. And at the end of the day, it just did. And they didn't really enjoy it. So I want to try to enjoy every little bit of it. Because that's the most fun. Just like even this whole Grammy week. You're talking about this week. What's this week? What's you know, week I, I have to stop myself and catch myself. And I have my best friend here with me, too. And she, she stops me and goes, OK, breathe. Because I think that it's not just that night. It's the whole week that leads up to it. And sometimes you drive yourself so crazy. And you forget that this is fun, that all of it's fun, just the getting ready and the craziness and running on adrenaline. It's been really exciting. Well, talk about those little things you have to do. You know, the dress, and the dress was too big. What's well, the well I, I had my dress made in New York, and it's it's fabulous. I love it, but it, it didn't fit quite right. So I had another fitting in New York, came to L.A., had it lost a little while, and it got, got here, and it's still a little big. So we had to shuffle around, find me a tailor, which we just, just did. So he's working on it now. It should be ready tonight, hopefully, morning. So just last-minute little things, you know, a shoe. You have the little buckle that's broken. Just little things you will never think of checking, but you should because it will happen. Nothing goes perfectly. Something's going to happen. So I've already had the dress and the shoes, so I'm thinking I'm okay. Because I've already had two little tragedies that have been averted. So, so the different outfits and accessories for everything you're doing over the next couple of days? Well, yeah. Um, we've had a few really great functions. We had a great party we attended yesterday, the Elton Benefit, which was amazing. And tonight we have the Clive Davis party, which is Apparently, very, very big thing. So I'm really excited about that. And then, of course, tomorrow is the big day. How nervous are you about the awards themselves and the possibility of the Ellen's Grammys? Wow, I am so excited, and I'm just, I'm going to be a bundle of nerves. I know that completely, <laughs> completely. I, I'm just so excited for him. It's been a wonderful year for him. He's worked so very hard, and I think that he really deserves it. You know, I'm a little biased, but what would it mean to the two of you if that did happen? What would it mean to you? It's a huge thing, you know, just that I see how hard my husband works and, and how dedicated he is and how talented he is. And I feel that we know this, but that's just like a validation, you know. It's just a, I, the way I say it is even if he doesn't win, he has. I mean, it, it is. The nomination is an amazing thing in itself. It's just a huge thing. He's 28 years old and he's nominated to do for doing a song with Carlos Santana. I mean, it, it just doesn't get better than that. So, And if he wins, it's just a great bonus. Anyone else really you can't excited. wait to see? Can't wait to maybe see when? Anyone else you're really interested in? Um, I'm really excited about seeing Mark Anthony. I think he's performing, so I'm really, really psyched about that. I know he's a fellow New Yorker, and I love his stuff, so I'm excited to see him. Wow, there's just so many people. We were, last night, we were just at the Elton party, and just you get totally starstruck. You know, you have Meg Ryan sitting right there, and Brad Pitt's behind you, and just like, oh. <laughs> So there are a lot of people we're really excited to see. Well, do you feel like you're part of that world now, though? Is it, I mean, still oh, no, of... never, never. Rob and I feel like we're the two 10-year-olds who were invited by accident. You know, we're kind of just sitting there going, did you see who that was? Trying to look really cool, like, yeah, I belong. <laughs> but it's kind of hard when you see Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston pass by. So it's, it's a lot of fun. I think that makes it more fun when you don't feel too jaded about it, and you're like, oh, of course I should be here. It adds to the excitement. Mm -hmm. You mentioned it before, and I know a lot of mystique, but now I'm actually curious in terms of your own ethnic background for modeling. If you can talk about that a little bit. Oh, yeah. I'm Spanish, actually. Um, I'm, my mom and my dad are both Puerto Rican. My mom's family is originally from Spain, and my dad's family is from Puerto Rico. Okay. So I'm Spanish. Spanish New Yorker. <laughs> No, you think that, did you just get lucky they wanted that kind of look for the video? Or do you think that wouldn't have happened otherwise? Um, well, the song was about um, a Spanish girl from New York. So <laughs> it kind of just worked out that way. I just fit the look that they were going for, yeah. being from New York in Spanish. <laughs> Very good. I think you're cool. Cool. Anything else you wanted to talk about? Make sure talk Anything about. else we wanted to mention? Now you can be publicist. Mm, kind of. Hold on, I have to switch hats. <laughs> well, we'll get, we'll get the two of you together then. Yeah, we can definitely get us to get Super. both together. 
Yeah, the song was, was about me, so it just worked out well. So the song was written for you? It was, it, it kind of was about, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, are we, we're still rolling here? Yeah. Right, we're, let's keep going. <laughs> so then, anyway, Cut. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was it, what's that like, though, knowing that this is one of the you know, biggest songs of the year, if not the biggest, and then the biggest Grammy nominee is, is about you? It's amazing. It's just a really humbling and amazing thing. Just, you know, you're riding in your car and it comes on and you're like, wow, I inspired this. It's mind-blowing. It really, really is. And I feel very honored. I do. Did you know when he was writing it that this was going to be... I, you know, when he starts writing it, it's really, it's just what starts coming out. So after he wrote it is when we kind of sat down and go, okay, we know what this is about, you know, so... It would be extra gratifying then for all these awards tomorrow? I think so. I think just the, the whole thing just came across just like this. Um, it was just a beautiful, I hate to say, like Carlos always says, it's a marriage, you know, that between him and Carlos and, and then with me because I was connected to the song that way. That I think it would be a really great thing just to see him get that award for it, just for us, you know? Very good. Very special. What a story. Yeah. Super. I just don't want to come out on camera going, it's about me. Do we have that rolling, by the way? It, it was rolling the whole time, but, but we've been worried. Yeah, we he's gonna have it. So. That would scare me. <laughs> we won't do that. Yeah, but it's so cute. Anybody that knows them knows that. And yeah, yeah. that we're just. Yeah, most people know that the song is. You know? Right, right. Yeah. But yeah, the, the public, I don't want the public to see me and go. The song's about me. All the girls on the website know the song's about you. Yeah, they yeah. they do, and they're like, "Did you see his wife on the video? Do they know stuff before I do? You know, I can go on and ask them. So what am I wearing?" No, does, does it bother you all the girls that are in love with your husband? You know what? If they're normal, no. <laughs> and if they're not, they've got so many other more pro bigger problems than you. So. Is he worried about guys being into you? And no, I think we both just think it's funny. You know, I mean, it's just funny because we are very, very secure with each other in our relationship, and we're really happy together. And I think it's flattering to know that other people are interested, and we just have fun with it. But other than that, we know who we're going home with. So. Yeah. It's not a big deal. It gets funnier the longer you're together, actually. You know, you can kind of go home and go, Did you see what that one was doing, you know, and just kind of play with it. Great. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. pieces too then. I try to give you some a little different selection. Mm -hmm. Rob likes the watch. She's wearing it. Clear that? Is that the watch? <laughs> yeah, I think I like that watch. So, Look, did you see it, this room, this? No. Look at it. It's right there. In that red case. Oh, wow. Mm. I like that. Can you? It's cool, right? Mm-hmm. Thanks. So how late has it been for you? Like? Yeah, it wasn't terribly late because, you know, they close it down around 2. Oh, okay. oh that's what? It was just, you want to hear just for a second? Oh, sure. Right. These are, if Rob needs them. Yeah. It's like these three days, and I have, I haven't really, I've been like in studio mode. Oh, really? So all of a sudden, like, you're out three days, and like, this is going on all day, and then it's all night, and then it's all night, and then it's all night. Oh. Do you, you put the record together? Yeah, with the engineers. Let's pull everything out. Coming out this year? Yeah, coming out in May. May 23rd. Did you see I have had really great fun with this girl listening, but they feel like this bastard son of, you know, teaching music. We can go? Yeah. Okay. We're going to start, so if you guys cannot talk. We'll keep this quick and easy. Both of you. Both of you. Look at you. 
my little you lady don't entourage. Want this. You don't want this. We'll take you down. <laughs> <laughs> Well, while, while you're in the, the bastard son mode, then yeah, right. <laughs> talk about just, just, just that experience. First of all, write, writing this writing this song, the story people know, but this song was written about or for. Well, oh, yeah, I mean, it was everything. It was like one of those perfect narratives. Like I got the call, and, and we, I was, you know, in Soho with, with my, you know, she, then she was my fiance, and it was, you know, it was for Santana, and and it was just like it all like all these things that had popped out like it was like Carlos talks about this duality that you can gain from you know from being a part of something like that and having you know having Spanish in-laws and having you know and so I was writing you know about my Moniquita and I was writing about you know this this girl that you know that was so smooth and you know it sounds cheesy when you say it like when you write it but but and it was you know it was just it just all seemed perfect it was like you know this woman was sitting next to me this you know this beautiful Latin woman that was there, and it was, you know, it was like this perfect muse for for that moment, you know. And then presenting that, those ideas, those thoughts to her, that music to her, what was that? Like? Uh, she, I mean, she was, she loved it. It was, it was like I, you know, it was working with Etal, the writer, and I got the, I've got my, the CD of the track, and I was, and she had like, she left for the day, and when she came back, I, you know, I had finished it up. I was like, this is it, and I, you know, I'd sang it to her, like put the CD on, I'd sing it to her. She was, you know, I was like, and you know, you never know you're so close to it. And I was, I said, this sounds really good. Like, is it just me? Because it sounds really good. And she was like, no, honey, it's really good. And I'm like, you sure? You know, and, and then uh, when I first, it was in the studio playing it for Carlos. That was the first thing he had said. He's like, you know, he's like, he listened to it. And before he even met her, he's like, he's like, you have a Spanish girl, don't you? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, because he said, but it was funny. It was not because I used the Spanish phrases. He thought because just the, the idea of the sentiment that, you know, I would change my life to better suit your mood. He's like, you must be with a Spanish woman, because you know, that's like, the only time you would do that. <laughs> now, as proud as you were of this song, as much as you liked it and Carlos liked it, did you look at it as like, like a fun side project? How much did you invest in this? Um, I mean, I, 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 as, as much as I do write in anything, you know, I invested from me. Uh, yeah, at the time, like, you could never expect it to be this, you know, like, I, I was, it was like I was 28 years old, I just had one record out, and I got a chance to be on a Carlos Santana record, and that alone, it, you know, was something I thought was kind of just be buried on the records, you know, and that it would just be there. When people would buy it, it would be like, they'd listen to it, and they would go, oh, hey, wow, that guy from yeah. Matchbox 20 is on it, you know, the guy from Third Eye Blind, whoever they think I am. And, they, and then they, when it became the single, it was like, well, that's, that's pretty cool. And then we shot the video, and then it started, and it was just like, you could never expect that to come out of it, you know. And then for us to get to do the video together made it even more fun, you know. It was like, because during the, the break between my band and, you know, and, and we, we had gotten married while I was in the studio, and we were doing the Santana thing, and it was like, for, it was like our time, you know. It was like for me and her to, to be, and, and when I got to be called away for work, it was nice that she could be a part of it, too, so that when we look back on this, we're, you know, we're looking on it as a memory, it's, you know, on top of, you know, being a part of something like with Carlos and being like a piece of musical history, you know, because that's what he does. Also being able to look back and it's just our memory, you know, of us hanging out that day in Harlem and, and shooting this video and, you know, and listening to Carlos and his guys play, you know, it's just our little memory for us. It's nice. And yeah, what's well, like having a little memory that's one of the most widely seen yeah, exactly. pieces of footage yeah. in last year? It's, I mean, that's, yeah, that's like one of the most amazing things is, is that, you know, for us it gets to, we get to to carry it on in both ways, you know, like sometimes, it's the only song, like I, I've got to the point where I, I can't listen to my stuff, <laughs> you know, like the new record I play over and over and over and over, but the, the last record, it's just like after a while, you know, I have to put it away for a little while and I can't listen to it, but whenever Smooth comes on, I'm like, I'm turning it up, you know, because it's Carlos playing, and it's, you know, and then for a little while, I just forget that I'm a part of it, you know, it's just like it just took on its own life, and it was, yeah, like you never know why you're right, you never know where it comes from, so wherever it came from, you know, that's what it was, and sometimes I look on it and just go, wow, that's a really good song, you know, <laughs> it's not wrong with that. This, this, this song and this video is also doing a lot for, for Marisol and her career as yeah. well. How much of that do you think about or realize? Or? Um, I mean, I, like, I've been trying to get her you know, to, to go back into modeling. She, you know, she had gone to school for a long time, and I, and I respected that decision. You know, I think it was a smart move, but I kind of, you know, the, to, to do that, because she, she does have a personality, and, and she is, to me, that kind of person that you want to see. You know, and I, so I was always on her back to come on, just you know, just go just talk to these people. You know, you you would really have a good time doing it. You know, and and it's nice because we, you know, we live our life and we have our time and we get to be a very normal couple. And this is what she does, and she doesn't have to do it, you know, for any other reason than you know, just to have a good time. And it makes me happy. You know, like I want her to just be able to have a really nice time with it. And I think that, you know, I mean, I think she's just beautiful. So, on top of that. Talk about this week, though, in terms of a good time. What's this week like for you guys? Is it crazy? Is it fun? Yeah, it's been really, really cool. We went to we went to to the Music Cares, which was really nice to just to be a part of that and to support that. And I tried to win a, a Neil Diamond guitar, but it didn't happen. And we uh, and we were uh, 
we're just kidding, you know. We were like, <clears throat> like little kids. I was, I was, you know, that's Brad Pitt. Look at that, you know, and he's a really good-looking guy. Look at that guy. He really is, man. And uh, <clears throat> and and we never. That was like the whole night. Everyone that would come on stage, we were, you know, just blown away by. And and then tonight, it's you know, it's just more of the same. If, like try you for a while, you forget that you're just kind of running through the middle of it, and it's all going on. And then you stop, and you're like, wow, this is just such a cool thing to be a part of. Not just, I mean, it would be cool to be here. It'd be cool to to just have a ticket to this, but to somehow be a part of these things, you know, makes it even more fun. It makes it, you know, it makes it real, and it becomes a, you know, a private memory of us that we have. Yeah, and doing this together and the support she has for you going into tomorrow. I'm yeah, like, what's, exactly. What's that oh, she's about? she's like she's following me around, going, "You're gonna win a Grammy," and I'm like, "No, no." She's then, "You're gonna win a Grammy. You're gonna win a Grammy," you know, and she loves it. But I told her if I do, she's gonna have to start calling me her Grammy-nominated husband from now on. This is my Grammy-nominated husband and my Grammy-winning husband. From all the personal things that have been part of this project, what would it mean to have the, the Grammy win for something this personal? Just so much of the two of your lives, this thing tomorrow. Um, I think it would be the perfect, you know, capper on that, you know, on the fact that, that we've had this little season of, you know, of me and her being able to be together and, and smooth, kind of like was the soundtrack for that season. And now, you know, if a Grammy would just kind of put the cap on it, you know, and we'd look on it on the shelf and just go, wow, that was, you know, that was amazing. But even if not, you know, I mean, I'm here, I'm here and I'm, I'm going to play with Carlos at the Grammys. You know, I mean, as a musician, that's... You know that's enough right there. You know, if I were, if I were the drummer or the percussion player that got to be up there, you know, just to play with it and be a part of that, and to be able to, to send that music out to that many people at one time and try and, you know, try and push buttons from across the world, you know, like just to be a part of that is, is a really big thing. Mm -hmm. And to have, you know, and, and to be able to be there and to know that my wife's by my side, you know, the whole time makes it perfect. Mm -hmm. And lastly, all that being said, going now on your own again with the band. Is what, talk about the feeling of moving back to the band thing and doing your own thing you know, with uh, Matchbox Club. That's, uh, you know, that's my natural progression, you know, I mean, that's where I belong. And so it's, it's, it, it, it felt good to really to be in the studio. It felt good to, to you know, to start to, to write for, you know, to this. Because I've been doing a lot of writing, you know, just to write. And so now it felt good to know that I was writing for this band, you know. And, and the reason that we're together is because musically that's where I really feel comfortable is when the five of us are together and the five of us are playing, you know? And so to get back to that and and now we had such a great, you know, a great time with the last record and, and we were afforded more successes than we ever thought we would get. And so now it's like we were given that, now it's what what we do with it, you know, it's, and this record kind of like really starts it, you know, like now we're in the starting gate and people are looking to see, you know, we've given you this gift, what are you going to do with it now? Like, and hopefully we'll, you know, we're going to do the right thing and we're going to keep our heads on straight and just try and make a really good record and, you know, and try not to suck a lot. That's the only, the only plan. Very cool. And sorry about to ask you, you're, you're welcome to the climb. While you're sitting here at the piano, could you uh, give us a little bit of... Oh, smooth? Oh, no, actually. <laughs> I, mean, if you, I mean, yeah, I mean, do you understand? Like, I don't no. actually, because I, I didn't write it on the piano, actually, since I didn't, right. so I don't even know it on the piano. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Sorry, I appreciate it. Is it this one? Yeah, yeah. This yeah, one, this one. one. that go with that. Yeah, yeah okay. if you're going to stay with Stud, stay with the note. I'm staying with yours. Thank you. These are really cool. I think you need to go. I, I mean, think you need to do that with the dress. What do you think these? Mm -hmm. I think so. That, I think that's much more you. But then can I just see this one on? Yeah. 